Ever wondered what the CIA has really been up to behind closed doors, and in broad daylight too? Since its dubious birth in July 26, 1947, the CIA has used the cruelest of methods to destroy their so-called enemies from Latin America to Africa. The CIA is supposed to represent the United States and the spirit of freedom around the world. But it's all about power, about securing US investments, plundering nature, and maximizing profits, and about eliminating the slightest threat to the US domination of the world. Welcome to Uncharted History. Today, we will be showing you the most unspeakable things the CIA has done to us, the people of the world. Harvard student and math genius Ted Kaczynski got subjected to mind-altering experiments. The CIA supported these experiments that were codenamed Project MKUltra. Kaczynski had a staggering genius IQ of 167, but never really fit in. He endured mock interrogations at the hands of a Harvard psychologist called Henry Murray that were designed to turn him against himself and his most important beliefs. Mind-blowing substances such as LSD were administered to him. He was placed under blinding spotlights and he received verbal abuse. The experiment lasted three years. Ted got verbally abused and humiliated throughout, damaging his brilliant mind forever. These experiments turned him into the Unabomber. Kaczynski graduated from Harvard at the age of 20 and became a professor at the University of California. In 1971, he became a recluse, hiding out in a cabin in Montana, learning survival skills, and turning into an anarchist that targeted scientists and academics. He produced a manifesto called Industrial Society and Its Future that declares that the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. In this manifesto, he argues that technology has had a destabilizing effect on society, has made life unfulfilling, and has caused widespread psychological suffering. Kaczynski argues that people spend their time engaged in useless pursuits because of so-called technological progress, that our goals in life are all artificial, and that we are going to be genetically engineered to meet the demands of technology. His solution is that we all return to nature like him. Most of this makes a lot of sense, but he chose the way of violence, assassinating three people and injuring 23 others in a mail bombing campaign that got him sentenced to life in prison. Clearly, CIA experiments set him on an extremely dangerous path. Since its birth on July 26, 1947, the CIA has committed countless tortures, high-profile assassinations, and bloody military coups in Latin America. Under the guise of exporting Western liberal values worldwide, the CIA primarily concentrates on securing power and profits for the US, safeguarding US investments, exploiting cheap unprotected labor, plundering other countries' natural resources and more, while getting rid of any threat that gets in their way. In 1954, the CIA launched the codename Operation PB Success against the progressive government of President Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala. He threatened U.S. interests in United Fruit and promised social justice to his people. U.S. warplanes bombed the capital, and Guatemala suffered three decades of brutal repression and hunger in which up to 200,000 people perished. In 1959, the CIA set up a rural militia in Haiti called the Tonton Makut. This secret police group terrorized dissidents, prisons, and torture centers claimed the lives of hundreds of victims. Arbitrary arrests, torture, disappearances, and political assassinations were regularly reported, according to Amnesty International. In 1969, CIA operative Dan Mitrioni set up the Office of Public Safety Ops, in Uruguay. The Ops supported the local police in torture methods, its goal being to produce the precise pain in the precise place in the precise amount for the desired effect. In 1967, the CIA brutally tortured and slayed the communist leader Che Guevara in Bolivia in revenge for his role in creating social justice in Cuba. The CIA has supported death squads, torture, and injustice in Bolivia ever since. In 1973, the CIA invested its energy in destroying the reforms of democratically elected communist president Salvador Allende. His only crime being to nationalize the copper industry so the US made a little less money out of the Chilean people. 
On September 11, 1973, General Augusto Pinochet led the military to the presidential palace. The CIA backed him up with propaganda and warplanes. They dropped bombs on the palace. Before he passed away, Allende made a heartbreaking speech. I will not give up. I will pay for the loyalty of the people with my life, and I tell you with certainty that the seeds that we have planted in the good conscience of thousands and thousands of Chileans will not be shriveled forever. The social processes cannot be halted, nor with crime, nor by force. General Pinochet ruled for 17 years. Thousands were rounded up, detained, tortured, executed, and disappeared. Then came the dirty war in Argentina from 1976 to 1983. Detention centers, torture centers, massacres, sexual abuses, and disappearances. 13,000 disappeared. Nazis greeted with open arms. Thousands of Nazis, including the ones who ran the concentration camps and destroyed the lives of innocent children in the beautiful green forests of Eastern Europe, were invited into the US after World War II. The CIA assisted, regarding them as ideal informants and spies in the Cold War against the Soviet Union. So if you think the US liberated the millions of prisoners that remained in the concentration camps at the end of World War II, please think again. The US kept the concentration camp survivors in the concentration camps before they released them. They weren't treated as well as you may have been told. They suffered from malnutrition and disease. Many didn't make it. The Allies helped the Nazis to keep these innocent prisoners under armed guard. US General Patton thought that the Nazis were best for this job. He described these displaced people as locusts and claimed that Jewish people didn't understand human relationships. US immigration officials awarded visas to the Nazis to live in the US, but denied admission to their Jewish victims. It didn't matter if these Nazis had set up and run the camps, or if they were police chiefs that had rounded up millions of men, women and children and turned them into soap. If the CIA likes you, you are in. This brutal CIA torture method is carried out by suffocating someone by strapping them on a tilted board with their legs above their head, wrapping a cloth over their face, covering both their mouth and nose. Water is then poured over the cloth, thereby blocking the tortured individual from breathing. This simulates drowning and causes insane levels of panic. The process is performed for roughly 40 seconds and then repeated during interrogation or until the detainee starts talking. During the Bush administration, the CIA subjected Abu Zubaydah, a suspected terrorist, to this watery fate. This is how it feels to be waterboarded. I struggled without success to breathe. I thought I was going to die. I lost control of my urine. On March 28, 2002, the US captured Abu Zubaydah, a Saudi-born Palestinian in Faisalabad, Pakistan. They shot him several times in the thigh and groin. Known as the Forever Prisoner, Zubaydah has been held at Guantanamo Bay detention camp in Cuba for over 20 years. In 2002, the Bush administration approved methods of pain. US torturers placed him naked inside a number of boxes that restricted his movements. Breathing was difficult, and the wounds on his legs reopened. It's unclear how long he spent in these boxes before he passed out. Then they targeted his phobia. Insects were tossed into the boxes as he screamed hysterically. Later, they beat him up against a wall and hung him by his hands from the bars of his cell. Zubaydah had an eye infection at the moment of his capture. He didn't get the proper care that he needed. His infection increased during his time in captivity, so doctors in the end had no choice but to completely remove his left eye. It's also unclear whether or not the prisoner guards were responsible for causing the eye infection as well as being negligent with authorizing treatment, but the worst can be assumed. The CIA have destroyed the tapes of Zubaydah's interrogations, but he's made drawings of his suffering, so this terrible truth and hideous cruelty can never be hidden away. 52-year-old Abu Zubaydah remains a prisoner at Guantanamo Bay with no hope of ever getting out. His very existence is evidence of the brutality of the US and of the system. His lawyer, Mark Denbo, has been trying for years to get his sentence lessened, but he has no concrete proof of what the CIA has done to him, so not too much can be done. The CIA have made it clear that Zubaydah should remain in isolation and incommunicado for the remainder of his life. Sleep deprivation is a key tool used in enhanced questionings. Loud music and white noise are played along with light control to keep detainees from getting proper sleep or even falling asleep. This continues for 24 hours on short loops. 
Sometimes detainees are placed in stress positions, shackled while standing with their hands in front of their body, or even handcuffed to the ceiling. The cells are also kept cold so that detainees aren't able to fall asleep. The CIA keeps detainees awake for up to 180 hours, which is about a week without a wink of sleep. Detainees have spoken up about their time in confinement. One CIA detainee has spoken out. If I started to fall asleep, a guard would come and spray water in my face. Other CIA detainees, including Abu Hazim and Abd al-Karim, ended up with broken feet because they were in shackled standing positions for too long. It has been recorded that at least five detainees have undergone rectal feeding at the hands of the CIA. Abd al-Rahim al-Nashiri, the Saudi citizen accused of organizing the bombing of the USS Coal Destroyer in 2000, is one of them. He was put in a forward-facing position, meaning his head was placed lower than his torso. Then the CIA subjected him to rectal feeding. Majid Khan, an accused confidant of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, has also been subjected to rectal feeding. His lunch tray included pasta with sauce, hummus, nuts, and raisins. These snacks were then pureed and rectally infused. So just to round off this not-so-charming history of the CIA, what interrogation methods are the CIA using in this day and age? What have you got left not to look forward to should you cross their path? In November 2002, a suspected Afghan militant, Gul Rahman, was disappeared inside a CIA black site north of Kabul known as the Salt Pit. Rahman had been left in a cold cell, stripped and doused in water. The CIA cold treatment plan included these dubious delights. 48 hours of sleep deprivation, auditory overload, total darkness, isolation, a cold shower, and rough treatment. The CIA officer in charge has been given a $2,500 cash reward for his consistently superior work. Since its inception, the CIA have been using torture techniques against their so-called enemies and dumping their mutilated bodies in unmarked graves. The CIA has summed up its so-called enhanced interrogation techniques at Guantanamo Bay and elsewhere, beating binding and contorted hooding, subjection to deafening noise, sleep disruption, sleep deprivation to the point of hallucination, deprivation of food, drink, and medical care for wounds, as well as waterboarding, walling, sexual humiliation, sexual exploitation, subjection to extreme heat or extreme cold. This is History Uncharted. See you next time.